So in this video, we're going to be looking at another contour integral. So we're asked to integrate 1 over dx d8 plus 1 dx over the interval from 0 to infinity, and I'm asked to show that that's equal to pi over 8 sine pi over 8. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let f of z be equal to 1 over z to the 8 plus 1. And this function is holomorphic in the whole complex plane apart from the poles of this function, or the zeros of z to the 8 plus 1. So to find where the poles of this function are, like I usually do, let's find the zeros of z to the 8 plus 1. <coughs> So what that amounts to doing is solving the equation z to the 8 plus 1 equals 0. Now that's exactly the same thing as solving the equation z to the 8 equals minus 1. And minus 1 is the same as e to the pi i. And then I can simply solve this using de Mars theorem. So using de Mars theorem, what happens? Well, using de Mars theorem, I find that z could be e to the, well it is, e to the pi i over 8 e to the 3 pi i over 8, e to the 5 pi i over 8, and so on and so forth until I get to e to the 15 pi i over 8. And I could actually keep going, but the, then I'd get back to e to the pi over 8, because uh, e to the i, or e to the ix is 2 pi i periodic. <coughs> So that means that in the complex plane, if I have e to the uh, theta, or in fact e to the pi i, if I add 2 pi i to that exponent, then I end up with the same number. So e to the uh, i pi is the same as e to the 3 i pi, which is the same as e to the 5 i pi, <clears throat> and so on and so forth. And that's not true for uh, the real valued exponential function. So that's a sort of nice property um, that we like to have when solving these types of problems. So where are these poles in our argon diagram? Well, let's see. So I've got a pole at e to the pi i over 8. I've got a pole at e to the 3 pi i over 8. Remember, e to the, th e to the i theta. Um, theta is basically the uh, angle that the number makes the real axis. I've got a pole at e to the 5 pi i over 8, e to the 7 pi i over 8, and all the rest follow similarly. So they all lie on this sort of unit circle. <coughs> Now if you watched all my other contour integration videos up to this point, you'll see that what I usually did was I would always draw a semicircular contour or something like a semicircular contour that goes around my poles. And <coughs> excuse me. And then I'd find the residues of those poles and then use the residue theorem. But I've actually got eight different poles here. And even if I did use a semicircle, then I would still actually have to calculate four different residues. Because if I draw a semicircle like this, I'd be, I'd be encompassing four different poles. And that's computationally very tedious, because if I had something like z to the 100 plus 1 in the denominator, then I'd be here calculating 50 different residues. And if you're doing this by hand, then that's going to take you a very, very long time. So there's got to be a better way of doing this, and there is. So instead of using a semicircle, I'm going to use a sector instead. So let me show you what I mean. So instead of doing a semicircle, I'm going to start at the origin, and I'm going to go along the positive rule axis to the point capital R. Then I'm going to go around this pole here, and I'm going to stop halfway between these two poles, and then I'm going to go back towards the origin. And so I have now completed the loop. I've got a closed contour. So I'm going to go around, I'm going to go along here, around the arc, and back to the origin. So I'm going to call this whole contour C, and as usual this curve is going to be gamma sub R. So let's look at what contour integral this gives me. So when I put it all together, by the way, I'm starting at 0, and I will assume that r is greater than 1, as I usually do. So what contour integral do I get? <clears throat> I have that the contour integral over c of my function, f of z dz, that is equal to the integral from 0 to r of f of x dx, plus the integral over gamma sub r, so now I'm integrating over the arc, f of z, dz, and now I've got this last contribution from this line here. Now this part is a little tricky, but if you think about it, I'm actually just taking this same integral from 0 to r, and I'm rotating it through some angle to get this line. So this line, this line right here, is basically just a rotation of this line. So let's find out how to do that. Well, what's this angle here? Well, this pole is e to the pi i over 8, and this pole is e to the 3 pi i over 8. 
So therefore, this line running through makes an angle of e to the two, uh, e, not e, sorry, uh, two pi over eight, that's it, with the positive rule axis. So this angle is gonna be two pi over eight, or it's gonna be pi over four. So that angle is pi over four. So basically to take this line and rotate it, I've gotta multiply every point on this line by e to the i pi over four. But that actually still doesn't solve the problem because if I do that, then I end up with a line that faces in this direction and I want it to face the other direction. So I want it to face this way. So I've got to rotate it by a further 180 degrees to do that. So what does that mean? Well, I want to start with x and I want to uh, multiply it first by e to the, so x e to the i pi over four, that gets it in this direction. Then I want to multiply through by another um, 180 degrees. So I want to rotate it by 180 degrees. So to do that, I've got to multiply by e to the i pi. So e to the i pi. But e to the i pi is minus one. So if I take e to the i pi and multiply it by this whole thing, it's just gonna be minus x e to the i pi over four. So that's the same thing as e to the minus i pi over four times x. So what does this mean exactly? Well, when I plug this into my original integral, so if I make the substitution um, x e to the, what was it? So if, it, so if I make this substitution here, what I'm actually gonna end up doing is instead of just getting f of x dx, uh, or one over one plus x to the eight, I'm actually gonna get minus e to the i pi over, was it over four? Yeah. So it's over four times the integral from zero to r, because remember it's the same thing as this integral just rotated, um, dx over one plus x to the eight. Okay, so that means I can collect these terms together. So this first integral and this third integral, I can collect those terms together. And what does that give me? Well, that gives me uh, one minus e to the i pi over four, times the integral from zero to r of f of x dx, plus the integral over gamma sub r of f of z dz. All right, so now I'm in a position to use the residue theorem. So let's find the residue of my function f of z, where f of z is one over z to the eight plus one, and I wanna find a residue at this pole here. <clears throat> Remember that's the only pole lying inside my contour. Okay, so let's do that. So I want to find the residue of my function f of z at the point z, uh, what's this? z equals e to the i pi over eight. That was the location of my pole. So by definition, that is just simply the limit <coughs> as z approaches e to the i pi over eight of z minus my pole, which is z minus e to the i pi over eight times my function. My function was just one over one plus z to the eight. So this is times one over z to the eight plus one. <coughs> now at this point, you might be tempted to factorize z to the eight plus one into z minus e to the i pi over eight, z minus e to the three i pi over eight, and you end up with a long list of uh, a product of factors in the denominator. And then you might want to cancel out these two factors here and try to plug in e to the i pi over eight. And that's the way I've done it in all my other videos. But that's actually the longest possible way of doing it. There's actually a faster way. And I'll show you how. Because if I plug in z equals e to the i pi over eight into this, uh, equation here, this expression, I'm gonna get e to the i pi over eight minus e to the i pi over eight, which is zero. And on the bottom, I'm gonna get e to the i pi over eight to the power eight plus one. Well, e to the i pi over eight to the power eight is e to the i pi, and e to the i pi is minus one. And minus one plus one is just zero. <coughs> so I end up with zero over zero, which is an indeterminate form. And that means I can use L'Hopital's rule instead. So L'Hopital's rule said, says that this is exactly the same thing as the limit as z approaches e to the i pi over eight <coughs> of the derivative of the top, which is one, <coughs> divided by the derivative of the bottom. And the derivative of z to the eight plus one is eight z to the seven. 
Now I can plug in E to the pi over 8, and I've got something that's much more simpler than a long list of factors. So when I do that, what do I get? Well, I get 1 over 8 E to the 7 pi I over 8. <clears throat> so now if we use the residue theorem, that tells me that the integral of my function f of z dz over uh, the contour c is just 2 pi i times the sum of my residues, which is 2 pi i times this thing. So 2 pi i times 1 over 8 e to the 7 pi i over 8, which is just pi i over 4 e to the 7 pi i over 8. So that's what I get using the residue theorem. So let's think about our other integrals now. So I've also got to deal with uh, this contribution here, which I'll deal with at the end. And I've also got to deal with this uh, gamma sub r integral. So let's deal with that. <coughs> okay, well, by the estimation lemma, I know that the modulus of my integral over gamma sub r, f of z, dz, that's going to be bounded by the product of the length of my contour, so gamma sub r, the arc, so the length of gamma sub r multiplied by uh, the maximum of the modulus of my function as it varies along this arc. So the maximum of 1 over the modulus of z to the a plus 1 as z varies along this arc. Okay, so I, what's the length of gamma sub r? Well, if you think about it, um, this is just an eighth of a circle. Okay, it's because it makes an angle of pi over 4 with a positive real axis. And if it's an eighth of a circle, then that enables me to calculate this length here. Because if I had a full circle here, then the circumference of that circle would be 2 pi r. And I've got to divide that length by 8 if I want this length here. So this length is going to be 2 pi r over 8. And 2 pi r over 8 is the same as pi r over 4. So in other words, uh, this length is 2 pi r over 8, which is the same as pi r over 4. Okay, now let's deal with this uh, part here, the maximum. Alright, well as usual, I know that on that part of the curve, it's going to trace out part of a circle on which uh, the radius of it is r. And on every point in that curve, the modulus of z is equal to r. So that's going to help me with the following part. I'm going to try and bound uh, z to the 8 plus 1. So what's the modulus of z to the 8 plus 1? As usual, using the reverse triangle inequality, that is greater than or equal to the modulus of z to the 8 minus 1, which is r to the 8 minus 1. So that tells me that 1 over the modulus of z to the 8 plus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over r to the 8 minus 1. And that helps me bound this even further. So then that means that I can say that using the estimation lemma, the modulus of gamma sub r of f of z dz, that's less than or equal to pi r over 4 multiplied by the maximum, or it's less than or equal to 1 over r to the 8 minus 1. And I want to know what the limit of this thing as r goes to infinity is. <coughs> So as r goes to infinity, what happens? Well, this thing quite clearly goes to zero, because if you look at this, I've got a polynomial in r of degree 1 in the numerator, and in the denominator, it has degree 8. And this thing definitely grows much, much faster than this thing. So as r gets very large, then this thing gets very large much faster than this thing does. And therefore, this thing will go to zero. So that tells me that this thing, in the limit as r goes to infinity, is going to have a total contribution of zero. <coughs> So basically, uh, where's my integral? So that's telling me that this thing, as r goes to infinity, is going to contribute 0. OK, so if I put it all together, what does that tell me about my integral? OK, well, on the left-hand side, uh, what was my residue? Uh, pi, OK, so I've got pi i over 4 e to the 7 pi i over 8. So on the left, I've got pi i over 4 e to the 7 pi i over 8. That was the contour integral using the residue theorem on the left hand side. And that's equal to 1 minus e to the, was it i pi over 4? 
1 minus e to the i pi over 4. So 1 minus e to the i pi over 4 <coughs> of the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x to the 8 plus 1 <coughs> dx plus 0, because in the limit as r went to infinity, so I'm taking the limit as r goes to infinity here, this, uh, the, the integral over the r contributed 0. But this is the integral that I'm trying to compute. So what do I do now? Well, let's see what happens if I divide both sides by 1 minus e to the i pi over 4. Okay, well, I'm going to get the, the integral from 0 to r, uh, 0 to infinity, because I'm taking the limit, of 1 over x to the 8 plus 1 dx. That's equal to pi i, so pi i, all divided by 4 e to the 7 pi i over 8, multiplied by 1 minus e to the pi i, e to the pi i over 4. Okay, well, let's see if I can simplify this a little bit. Okay, well, let's see if I can write this in a different way. Well, this is the same thing as pi i, or divided by 4 e to the 7 pi i over 8, times 1 minus e to the 2 pi i over 8, because I'm just uh, rewriting pi i over 4 as 2 pi i over 8. It's the same thing. And now let's see what happens if I uh, multiply this thing through. If I multiply through by e to the 7 pi i over 8, what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to get pi i in the numerator, and I'm going to have to divide <coughs> by 4 times e to the 7 pi i over 8 minus, well, 7 pi i over 8 plus 2 pi i over 8 is 9 pi over 8. So that's minus e to the 9 pi i over 8. Well, the, the exponential function is 2 pi i periodic. So that means I, sub, I can subtract multiples of 2 pi i. And if I subtract 2 pi i from 9 pi over 8, I'm, I'm going to get minus 7 pi i over 8. So let me just write that down. So, so 9 pi i over 8 minus 2 pi i is minus 7 pi i over 8. Because the exponential function is 2 pi i periodic, I can do that. All right, so what happens when I uh, use that fact. Well, that's going to tell me that that whole thing is pi i all divided by 4 times e to the 7 pi i over 8 minus e to the minus 7 pi i over 8. Now this is starting to look a bit familiar. In fact it looks exactly like the definition of sine. And if you remember um, the definition of sine of x in terms of exponentials was e to the i x, so e to the i x, minus e to the negative i x, e to the negative i x, all divided by 2 i. <clears throat> so if I plug in uh, x equals 7 pi over 8, I'm going to find that sine of 7 pi over 8 is e to the 7 pi i over 8, minus e to the minus 7 pi over 8, and that's exactly what I've got here. So I'm just going to multiply 2 i times sine, and I've got exactly the same expression. So let's do that. So this whole thing is therefore equal to pi i all divided by 4 times 2 i sine of 7 pi over 8. Okay, well the i's are going to cancel, so this i will cancel with this i. And so this thing is just equal to pi over 8 sine of 7 pi over 8. And this is exactly the same as pi over 8 sine pi over 8. And the reason this is true, well there are two reasons why this is true, um, is because sine of x is exactly the same as sine of pi minus x, and you can also see this geometrically if you draw out the sine curve. So basically uh, sine of pi over 8 is equal to sine of 7 pi over 8. And that completes the proof. And so that's how we deal with contour integrals that have a lot of poles. So if you like what you saw, make sure you like this video, comment and subscribe, and make sure to check out our Facebook and Twitter pages in the description box below. So see you next time.